It's early morning in Phoenix. Commuters are fighting their way through the maze of freeway parking lots. But conservation warriors from Wells Fargo are already up to their elbows in muck. We're here at the Nina Mason Pulliam Rio Salado Audubon Center for a conservation workday. We're blessed with the, the longest name in the national uh, network of Audubon centers. Um, we're the state office for National Audubon. Um, and this center is specifically interested in engaging urban audiences, um, our South Phoenix and uh, urban community here, in conservation. The center sits on about six acres in the Rio Salado restoration area, which is about 600 acres of restored riparian habitat. So behind me we have our wetland pond, and this was put here to sort of mimic what would have been here along the Salt River before um, humans came and inhabited it. And as part of the engagement opportunities, we have people that come and help work to protect the Gila top minnow and the desert pupfish, which at one point were the state's two most common fish and now can't really be seen in the wild anywhere anymore. So this gives the people not only a chance to connect with nature in Arizona and our native species, but it gives them a chance to give back and help those species as well. Today, our conservationists will modify sections of the pond to provide more nesting ground for the native top minnow and pupfish found in the pond. When one thinks Audubon, they think feathers, not fins. What's up? Well, it's good that you think that because Audubon is foremost about protecting birds and their habitats, but their habitat is a big group of species and organisms that all work together to support the birds in the end. Um, so as much as we're super excited to have the pupfish doing really well in our pond, um, it's also cool when we see a green heron shoot out with one of them as well. The work today seems easy enough. Remove cattails, lay down a sheet of plastic, cover with sand, place pavers, and then add more sand. How difficult can that be? They'll be done before their morning coffee gets cold. It's difficult. It's a lot of hard work, so fortunately we got a lot of good volunteers here from Wells Fargo, as well as the Audubon Center, and they're putting in a lot of work, uh, but uh, we are hoping that this habitat improvement will have a lasting effect for several years. There's a problem we're having to deal with. Big root mats. Wells Fargo is really big in the community uh, about us getting involved and, and helping our communities. We have been volunteering with Audubon for several years now. We've been working on the burrowing owl wildlife habitat and uh, we've helped out at Wild at Heart who uh, supplies the owls for the burrowing owl project. And we've been doing this fish habitat and we worked on the pollinator garden and we do cleanups and whatever they need us to do, we come out and do it. Some of the tools that you want to have for this fish habitat improvement, a yard cart for hauling away materials, the wheelbarrows are great for bulk sand and also for moving um, the square pavers. But uh, for the cattail removal, these little folding hand saws work really well because they're just small enough and they provide just enough dexterity so you can actually get down to the root mat and cut them out of the uh, substrate. You can also use some of the lopers that are available. Get a pair of shovels for moving sand, and as well as a rake for helping to gather up the cattails to haul them away. And make sure you have a good pair of work gloves. Protect your hands at all times. Once the cattails are removed and hauled away, it's time to install the barrier plastic. The six mil plastic barrier that we use uh, as a base layer will help us try to maintain uh, an area free of cattail growth. Because if we just put down the sand and the pavers, the cattail root mass that still remains, so the shoots coming out from the nearby habitat, are gonna come up and work their way through the pavers. So our hopes are that the six mil plastic will actually provide more of a first defense. Oh, yeah. okay. The plastic has a tendency to float away, so a layer of sand is added both to hold it down and to provide a level surface for the pavers. Shoreline, just right at the shoreline, yeah. There you go, perfect. perfect. To do a habitat work for a 10 foot by 10 foot section is probably about two to three hundred dollars worth of materials. Uh, it literally takes about 900 pounds of sand, a hundred of the uh, square pavers, and at least two of these shelf brackets, and a lot of labor. <laughs> Stephanie and Jeff are putting new pavers in or additional pavers in 
to supply habitat for the desert pupfish and top minnow. So they'll have little homes that they can defend and raise their young. When the last paver is in place, it's time for the final step, more sand. This is the sand that the fish will use to make their breeding nests, ensuring that there will be a future generation of Gila top minnow and desert pupfish. Potentially, we might have to come out here, you know, every five years or so to try to uh, reclaim the habitat once the cattails continue to expand into the area. This effort's an experiment. Uh, this is the first time we've had a chance to do this, so we're hoping that uh, if this is successful and it keeps this area free of cattails for several years, then we'll be able to use it at other sites uh, similar to this where they have heavy cattail growth along the shoreline. A lot of our schoolyard ponds or other safe harbor enrolled sites. The Rio Salado Center is one of the safe harbor agreement sites. Look at all of them. The safe harbor agreement for the Gila top minnow and pupfish is a means for non-federal landowners to participate in the recovery of those endangered species. Through their partnership with Arizona Game and Fish and monies from the Heritage Fund, the Audubon site is providing a valuable conservation benefit to these native fishes.